Is WWE going to kick down the forbidden door again, but this time with stardom? We're going to talk about that, plus so much more massive news in today's video. Don't forget, we're giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. So if you want a chance to win, go ahead and click subscribe today. Welcome back to the Ango Show. My name is Ango. I want to kick things off with some very quick news. Dave Meltzer is reporting that Cody Rhodes has re-signed with the WWE. On the flip side, Sean Ross Sapp is saying that Cody Rhodes was offered a contract with the WWE, but hasn't re-signed with the company. Now, this is obviously causing a lot of confusion online because a lot of people are wondering if WWE actually did extend the Cody Rhodes contract. And to be honest with you, I really don't know. Now, let me make it very clear with Cody Rhodes and his whole contract situation. We saw him come in. He's been with the company for over a year. This would be an early extension. If WWE has sent Cody Rhodes a contract extension this soon into his existing contract, then more than likely Cody Rhodes will probably sign it. Now, at the end of the day, Cody Rhodes is here to win the big one. And listen, I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this, but I will keep saying it until it freaking happens. If WWE doesn't have Cody Rhodes walk out of WrestleMania 40 with the WWE Undisputed Championship belt, then I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Because at the end of the day, if Roman Reigns keeps holding that belt, I am not going to be very happy. And I'm going to make sure you guys know I'm not very happy. Cody Rhodes needs to walk out with the belt plain and simple. It's as simple as that. I don't think we need to sugarcoat it. Now, if Cody Rhodes resigns with the company, I would make sure Cody Rhodes throws it in his contract. Hey. I really do got to finish the story. But nonetheless, very interesting stuff from Cody Rhodes. We'll see what actually goes down. Right now, conflicting reports out everywhere. But I'm going to assume he will eventually re-sign with the company. Uh, guys, we have to talk about this. Andrade, uh, he has a big-time match at AEW World's End. And this is one that a lot of people will be paying attention to. Because if Andrade loses, maybe it's a signal of what is to come. In the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer pointed out that at a recent press conference following a CMLL match, Andrade says he has a lot of open doors in 2024, and he's not necessarily sure which one he will choose. Meltzer then went on to report, I do know that those in WWE expect him to return. I also know that those close to him say that he may very well go back, but is also open to stay in AEW if Tony Khan makes a better offer than WWE. This is interesting stuff for a variety of reasons. Obviously, we know that Andrade is in a very special situation, right? His wife, Charlotte Flair, works for the WWE. Andrade also wants to work for CMLL. We also know that Andrade doesn't really have legitimate beef in AEW. The, the whole storyline between him potentially leaving the company was actually a work. Um, but you have to wonder if Andrade would be better utilized in WWE or in AEW. Now, I'm just going based off of what I have seen with my own very eyes. I don't feel like AEW has done a lot to make Andrade feel like a significant player on its roster. And I can't imagine that getting better when you sign guys like Will Ospreay. You know, when, when you bring in this talent, when you bring in when you bring in Shibata, when you bring in Kota Ibushi, when you bring in all of these new shiny toys for Tony Khan, I feel like there's a crop of talent who don't get utilized. And Andrade is one of those guys on the list. Now, with that being said, I'm a huge fan of Andrade. And AEW has been working with him a little bit recently. If AEW makes him significant... If they make him a significant player in the game, I have no problem with him staying in AEW. But if he's going to be booked the way he has been for the last few years, then at the end of the day, I think it's better for him to go to WWE. I think Triple H will book Andrade extremely well, especially because of Triple H's track record of booking Andrade in NXT. Also, you do got to factor in one more thing that's a very big point in AEW's recruiting efforts. And that is the fact that Andrade has openly discussed wanting to work in New Japan. So if Andrade wants to work in New Japan, I mean, anything is possible with WWE, but they just they have their thing going with AJPW. Andrade probably has a better chance of staying in AEW while working with New Japan, and that is also something to factor in. But this is something definitely to pay attention to. He has a big match against Miro at World's End. And depending on how they go about it, Andrade could very well be on his way out. 
I want to turn our attention to Mercedes Money. Trust me, this topic is going to be a big one because we got to talk about stardom in just a moment. Mercedes Money has filed for several trademarks ahead of her in-ring return. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. She has filed for Moneywear, Time is Money, and Money Talks. Those are the three trademarks that she put uh, in the system December 22nd. Uh, she did the filings with Michael E. Dawkins. We all know this guy is the one who has helped so many wrestlers with trademarks. Uh, what's interesting is these trademarks are listed for entertainment and clothing purposes. Uh, we saw her leave WWE in 2022. We saw her go to New Japan Pro Wrestling. We saw her become the IWGP Women's Champion. We have seen a lot with Mercedes Money. Now, WWE is a little bit different today. Triple H and Nick Khan have completely changed the way that WWE operates. That is very true of a statement because WWE is sending talent to Japan for All Japan Pro Wrestling. But now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Here comes Stardom. So Stardom is a company that WWE has expressed interest in working with. According to Dave Meltzer, Besides working on new, uh, the new deal with All Japan Pro Wrestling, WWE has expressed interest in working with Stardom. Nothing at this time is finalized, but they do know that WWE is confirmed to be interested. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because at the same time, the word going around is that Julia will in fact be joining WWE after her contract expires with Stardom in 2024. More specifically, March of 2024. So hear me out. Mercedes Money coming to WWE. Is there a chance that WWE allows her to use her Mercedes Money name? Yeah, I think there actually is a chance. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there is a chance. WWE bringing in Julia makes a lot of sense. WWE working with Stardom is a big enough reason to retain the opportunity, they're going to get the opportunity to sign Sasha and Julia. Oh, and by the way, we're going to work with Stardom. It's just a puzzle that fits. It's uh, it's the puzzle pieces that fit that make this so interesting. If WWE wants Mercedes money, but she wants to continue to do the Japanese wrestling stuff, then the good news for Mercedes money is WWE is looking at working with that company. So some things that maybe in the past we wouldn't have expected, it could actually happen this time around. I fully believe that WWE will bring in Julia, and I think WWE could very well bring in Mercedes Money or Sasha Banks, however they want to go about it. And if WWE is working with stardom, that makes it a lot easier for Julia and Mercedes to both come to WWE. And on the flip side of that, what you really have to understand is that WWE working with stardom gives them an opportunity to send some women who have not been fully developed a chance to go work in stardom. Right, And there's an opportunity for WWE to bring in some of this talent from stardom. Maybe it's the Royal Rumble. Maybe, it, I mean, it's a variety of things that they can do. WWE having these working relationships, they don't need to be this grand thing, right? They just need to have something. And I think with WWE doing this, it allows the talent to work with both companies. And, and I, I, personally speaking, as somebody who watches stardom, a little bit here and there. I'm, I'm not going to act like I watch stardom every single day. It's not physically possible between watching all of the wrestling programs I do. But when I watch stardom, one thing that you're going to see is, obviously, it's an all-women's promotion. But you're going to see some very, very good women's matches. And you're going to see a lot of great talent in stardom. So the cool thing is, when WWE can work with stardom, they're getting access to a talent pool. And for stardom... Maybe having some growth, you know, obviously WWE has talent. They can do talent trades and, and things like that. They can they can definitely work together. It could be beneficial. And it's exciting to see when you look at some of the free agent targets. And on that note, I should also mention, I could see WWE working with stardom. I could see Mercedes Money keeping her name, but I can also see Mercedes going to TNA. I can also see TNA making a deal with Stardom as well. And truth be told, I could actually see a higher likelihood of Stardom working with TNA than WWE, specifically because of Bushiroad, who owns Stardom, and they already have that working relationship between New Japan Pro Wrestling and TNA. So that is something to also factor in. Let me know what you guys think down below.